First Samuel 15, 23. We read it last time, but that's what we're going to start today. God been putting on my heart that we, you know, we've been going through. I ain't going to say we rushed through the witchcraft. Because what? This is the third one. We still on witchcraft. But well, you said we were gonna be on. It's gonna be life. on for a minute because I don't know. We might get done, but we always talk about witchcraft, and when we think about witchcraft, we think about you know witches and goblins yeah. and Halloween and, and stuff like that. And all that. But you know, okay. yeah, Ouija boards. Yeah. Everybody yeah. don't have a Ouija board. Right. You know, we can be doing some witchcraft in our life and not and knowing not it. Yes. And that still does not make you know excuse for us. We still yeah, got to have the kind of palm reading, palm and... reading, horoscopes, you know, superstitions. Yeah. Don't step on the crack of the bank your back. That yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. You cannot serve anything but the one and true God. That's yeah. it. What first? I'm sorry, chapter and verse. Um, we uh, First Samuel 15 and 23. That's where we're gonna start at. That's what I wrote down today too. Uh -huh. That's why I think that's, ah. that's why we ended last week. But we gonna go there because God, you know, because that's the one who wanna read it for me. Uh, I forgot it. Your rebelling against God or disobeying Him because you are proud is just as worshiping idols or asking them. You refuse to do what God told you. So God has decided that you cannot pay Yeah, he talked about Saul here. When it comes So this is what I'm saying. When it comes I, um, Rebellion. That's one of the ones that mentioned in there was rebellion. Yeah, 1 Samuel 15, 23. That's one of the ones. Is that on? Hey, you too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the rebellion was one of the ones that it mentioned. Um, stubbornness is another one. You know, we wouldn't think of that as witchcraft, but it is. Mm -hmm. Anything that's a stumbling block is witchcraft. Right. Anything that hinders, you know, your, your walk or, you know, you would be a stumbling block for somebody else, um, that's witchcraft because, you know, that's demonic. You know, God don't like that. Um, gossip is witchcraft. Go ahead. Would you say anything against God's plan? Yes. Anything against anything God's works. plan. Right. Any negative, anything it, negative. Yes. Right. All of, you know, all the works of the flesh, everything all go together. Mm -hmm. Sin is sin. I mean, I don't care what kind, what you title it, what you call it, how you dress it up. It's still sin. Right. But... We think, okay, we ain't doing nothing because we ain't got no Ouija board and we ain't got witches hats and, you know, we ain't flying around on the broom. Mm -hmm. But when we rebel against, if God tells us to do something and we don't do it, that's witchcraft. We remember what happened to Jonah. Right. You know, he told him to go to Nineveh. Yeah. Jonah said, forget that, I'm going over here and do what I want to do and found himself in the belly of a well. That represents stagnation. If you find yourself sitting, stagnant, nothing is moving, because God is a moving God. Right. He flows, you know, there's always change. God don't stay the same. I mean, he stays the same, but he's always moving. You mean, you, 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 when you get touched by God, yeah. I mean, you know it. I mean, there's a change, there's a, you cannot be touched by God and stay the same. You just can't do it. Um, he is blessing, you know, he is um, the Alpha and the Omega. He is, you cannot have God in your life and not have a prosperous life. If you're doing everything that you're supposed to do, be obedient. Amen. With God in your life, there should be no lack. Mm -hmm. Because God, you know, he makes our cups overflow. Yes. And he, that's not to be wasteful. He makes our cups overflow because he wants us to give to the poor, to feed the needy and everything. That means whatever he puts in your cup, that's for you. Right. But you ought to not be stingy. You ought to be able to let it overflow and be able to help others. Amen. So you can't have rebellion in there because if God tells you to do, I don't care how big or how small it is. Mm -hmm. If God tells you to do it, do it. If it says to say hello to somebody, if you don't do it, you will find yourself sitting stagnant mm -hmm. in a place. You know, wonder why, you know, you just down depressed. You know, mm -hmm. that's where all those mental illnesses come from. Mm -hmm. 
right. being reprobate mind and all that because you're not doing what God say do. I don't know why he got me on this, but there's somebody mm -hmm. not doing what God say do. He's trying to get you to move. He's trying to get you to let go of some things. Right. We ain't done a fast in a while. The thing that God is putting in my mind, the one thing that God been trying to get away, get you to stop, let it go for this week. The one thing that God been trying to take away from you, the thing that you know that that's not holy, the thing that you're doing that you know that's not clean, mm -hmm. let it go for this week. And watch God. You know, he, he may take the craving away. He may, I don't care if it's gossiping, lying. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's talking about somebody. I don't care what it is. The one thing that God has been trying to remove that's been a hindrance in your life, keeping you from the blessings of God, let it go this week. And next week, I want to hear testimony. Mm. So I'm saying, there's something. That's why he got me stuck on this. Rebellion. I don't care how old we get. We always say rebellion to teenagers. But you know, rebellion is in grown folk too. Stubbornness ain't just in grown folk. It's in teenagers too. Stubborn as a mule. You know, we hear that all the time. So, whatever it is that's hindering, that's got you, I call it a holding pattern. You're just mm -hmm. sitting there waiting for God to do something but God is waiting on you to do something. I always say, like I was talking to Bill, we the hands of God. If we don't do nothing, ain't nothing going to get done. Right. We the body of Christ. So God, he the head, but he need arms and, you know, his body to work in the kingdom. Right. Let's go to, um, let, me, let me finish that. They say, rejected the word, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, thou hast also rejected thee from being king. Mm -hmm. rejected the word of the Lord. The word was, was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Yes. That is Christ, his son. Jesus was the word. Yes. So when we reject Christ, when we reject Jesus, then we're rejecting God. we not only rejecting God, but we're rejecting his son too. We're rejecting his spirit. So I don't care what it is. If God say move to the left, he means move to the left. Right. I don't care how mediocre or whatever it seems. If he say give somebody a dollar, then that's what he means. The sometimes we are stagnant and things aren't moving in our life because he can't get us to move. You know, and that's a little bit of that message. If we're not giving something out, we can't receive. When we give, we make room for God. I mean, God sees the obedience. We give, God gives us. You know, he can't do for us what we don't do. You know, he said, we don't forgive, he won't forgive us. So, we got to make room. You know, some of us are so complex. We got so much going on in our life to where we got to be able to focus on God, make room for God, make time for God. Remember last week I said, y'all owe God two hours and 40 minutes a day. That's your time. Two hours and 40 minutes a day. I give time and offer three hours. I'm either reading a book, you know, studying, ministry, doing something, giving God three hours of my time a day. Well, actually, I get more than that because I'm always full-time ministry doing something. But giving God at least that minimum a day, and you'll see God move and change in your life. We always want God to do something for us, but what are we doing for God? So let's move on to 2 Kings. 21, 1 through 6. 21, 1 through 6. Some of us, like I said, we just stagnant. We're not, we're in the belly of a whale. Just sitting there. Because we're not doing nothing for the kingdom. We're not walking in our purpose. We don't even know what our purpose is. We won't sit with the Bible to find out what God said. Right. And that doesn't excuse us. That's, uh, 2 Kings 21, 1 through 6. Okay. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king of Judah. 
and he rode 55 years from Jerusalem. His mother was <coughs> at the Zara. Nasa disobeyed the law. Uh, 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 one through six. One through six. Mm -hmm. uh, Manasseh disobeyed the Lord <coughs> by following the disgusting customs of the nations that the Lord had forced out of Israel. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he rebuilt the local shrines that his father Hezekiah had torn down. He built <coughs> altars for the god Baal and set up a sacred pole for worshiping the goddess mm -hmm. Asherah, just as King mm -hmm. Ahab of Israel had done. And he faithfully worshiped the stars in heaven. Mm -hmm. In the temple where only the Lord was supposed to be worshiped, Manasseh built altars for pagan gods mm -hmm. and for the stars. He placed these altars in both courts of the temple. Hmm. That's, a, that's one more. That's, that's one more. Yeah, I'm going to say. He set up the pole for Asherah there. Manasseh practiced magic and witchcraft. Mm -hmm. He asked fortune tellers for advice and sacrificed his own son. He did many sinful things and made the Lord very angry. Years ago, the Lord had told David and his son Solomon, uh, where are we at? Jerusalem is the place I would prefer all others in Israel. Uh, how far are we going? We just want to sit. sit. <laughs> oh, okay. That's all right. Okay, I didn't know where it ended. Right. I said, you have a different translation, so I'm like, I'm trying to figure out where you at. <laughs> um, I wanted to go through all of that so you can get some background of that story. See how far Manasseh went? He even gave up his own child. I mean, he sacrificed his own child, dealing with familiar spirits, you know, hanging out with lizards and stuff. Do you know that that makes God really, really mad? if we go to somebody else other than him. I mean, just because we can't see him, um, just because we may not be able to hear him, we think it's okay. But God gets angry. And, you know, I, every time I see this, I think about when Moses had to pray God off of those 6,000 people in the book of Exodus. He cared enough to listen to the heart of Moses. He said, Moses said, if you do this, they're going to say you couldn't do it. That's the only reason why them people is living or say they were living. That's the only reason why we still here at this moment. Because had he killed all them all, he could have started it again. That would have put us back that much further. We may not have known it, but still, because Moses was able to intercede. Now, God is not so big of a God that he can't hear us. Right. So if Moses was able to save them 6,000 people life, why can't we go to God? This man went to enchanters, that's witches, and you know, with witchcraft. That's you know, he went to wizards, tarot cards, you know, he went to sorcerers, he went to all these other kind of things, raising up pagan idols, bell, you know, walking around with the crucifix on and not serving. You know, being obedient with God, that makes the crucifix a graven image. Mm -hmm. Because you just got it on just to have it on. Right. You know, you deceiving everybody else into believing that you serving that, but you, it's just a symbol. It's just another piece of jewelry to you. So, God don't like that. I mean, we got to be careful of the logos and the things that we represent on our body because we cannot represent that we're Christians. Or we believe in the Christ and run around here with Halloween stuff on. Mm -hmm. We can't celebrate Halloween. I don't care who listening or what they say. You cannot serve two gods. Even with Christmas, and my kids will tell you, and they, they'll really tell you, I don't celebrate Christmas the way everybody else do. Right. Because yeah. that's not glorifying God. That's glorifying the economy. That's glorifying, you know, getting everything back in the black 
And you know, Jesus wasn't even born on that day. That's just what they want to do. So we cannot serve that and be able to serve, you know, God, a, a true and living God. He said, you either for me or you against me. So all of these things, we got to be careful when we got setting up in our house, you know, um, pagan idols, pagan, you know, stuff, you know, things that we don't even think that we would go to, but when we pray, are we praying or are we just talking to ourselves? You know, that's, you know, catch 22 also. We're supposed to talk to God. Right. Ourself can be an idol. We can look at ourselves more than we look at God. We can put ourselves up there. Come on now, y'all know Lucifer. You know what he did, yeah, yeah, pain, he did. everything. We can go to ourselves. Esau. God hated Esau. You know, because Esau was in his own strength. He said he could do everything in his own time, his own everything. He didn't need God, basically. So Cain gave him the leftovers, you know. You know, these type of people, these type of spirits show that they don't have the love of Christ. So we can we can be all up in ourselves. It's idolatry. Well, self-righteousness. Back in my message again, self-righteousness. Talking about the prodigal son. Not talking about the one that was out there in the field with the, the slop, you know, in the mud with the pigs. I'm talking about the prodigal son that was in the house with the, with the father. He was a, he, I've been here and I've done all of this with you. I've, I've, I've served you. I've, I've never done you wrong. Right. And you going to kill the fatty calf for the young one, the, you know, the brat, the baby of the family, you know, that kind of stuff. So that, you know, self-righteousness, that's witchcraft. So we got to be careful what we do. We got to be, I mean, we can act all humble and, you know, in our flesh, you know, giving and all that kind of stuff, but the iniquity is in our spirit. Mm -hmm. The thing that we hide in our heart. Are we humble in our hearts? Are we repentant to God in our hearts? Or do we just think we a bag of chips holier than thou? And we go to the <laughs> so, is witchcraft is Something that you cannot see mm. until, you know, it, it activated in our members. Witchcraft is something that comes from the heart. One thing they teach you in college, when you first go into college, they teach you about communication. They teach you how to write, how to talk, how to be humble. You know, they teach you how to not be uh, disrespectful. They, you know, have, you know, like them... Salutations, how Paul used to begin the letters and stuff like that. They teach you all of that. But then they take another course, and you would think that's all you need. But there's another course that teaches you about tone. Mm -hmm. Tone is everything. I can say something 50 million ways, but it's my tone. Mm -hmm. There are people that can say, I love you. But if they tone behind it says something different, that's what you're going to see. Because the tone is your heart, it's your emotion, right. it's your behavior, right. it's your body language. Yeah. So there's a lot of people, I'm going to say leaders too, bullies. There's a lot of bullies, there's a lot of leaders that got the smile on their face, you know, the, the, the wolves, the, the false prophets. Mm. They got all of that going on, you know, they want to give, they act like they want to give and do, but the witchcraft is in their heart because... They not the tone. They taking and doing what they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not reverencing God. It's not glorifying God. Um, you know, a person by the tone they do, they can say and speak all sweet nothings in your ear. Right. We know as women, men can give mm -hmm. us sweet nothings in our ear, and mm -hmm. we just but we know we got to look at what they're doing. <laughs> Oh, baby, I love you, but you won't come pay no life bill. You won't help me now. You won't do nothing. <laughs> baby, I love you. I was gonna show me love. I gotta see love. Don't don't just right. tell me you love me. Right. You know, show me something. So mm -hmm. women, we can action. see that. Yeah, put it in action. That's why I say Eve was able to see the enemy. Adam, I don't think he could see the enemy because he's running out doing what he's supposed to do. Logic doing everything. But Eve was able to see the enemy. Um. And then she was deceived because she had never seen nothing like that before. And, you know, I'm sure we didn't, we didn't see, he wasn't laying on his belly when then. He was standing upright, the mm -hmm. serpent. So, 
First of all, you don't be sitting down talking to something that you're supposed to be have domination over anyway. Right. That would be me like being friends with my my employees or whatever. You don't that's not, you know, business protocol. You got to have, you know, they got to have a level of respect for you. You right. can't sit around gossiping with people that you work with and or, you know, cuz it's going to come back to bite you and you're going to end up losing your job and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I'm saying there is the tone is what sets the wolf, the sheep and the wolves apart. The tone, it's got to match up with the words. The tone is where the witchcraft comes from. It shows the iniquity that's in the heart. So, as you listen to, and I tell my seniors all the time because they got so many scams out here for you guys. I mean, the last scam I had, somebody came through telling me that I had a student loan something. And they was going to pay this. And then another one said, I had an Amazon credit card that balance. You're going to pay the balance off. I know I ain't got no Amazon credit card. I shop at Amazon a lot, but I ain't got they ain't gave me no credit card. I ain't even went for one. So right. I'm going through, I mean, I went for a business credit one time, but I didn't go for no credit credit card. Right. So there's scams out there. They will say something to make you, I mean, it may be a little thing that you've done before. That's why I say be careful on these end of these tablets they gave y'all. Mm-hmm. It'll seem like something that you did before, but it's actually somebody just coming through, picking at your heart because they saw something. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, you sitting there and gave all your credit card, everything. You know, gave all your money, all that. Mm-hmm. So pay attention to the tone. That of whatever's going on, pay attention to the tone. Ain't nobody just gonna give no money away, especially in no pandemic. They don't want to give stimulus checks, so y'all know everybody just ain't gonna give no money away. So make sure you pay attention to the tone of the thing. Right. And if you questionable, if it seems too good to be true, normally it is. But if you questionable, call somebody else that may know better. Call me. Call somebody that you know, so you don't find yourself in a situation. Yeah, all your your paperwork and everything. I mean, your your money and everything gone. She gonna fall out the chair. Don't let her fall out. (laughs) You tell God telling on you, girl. Get up, (laughs) you about to bash my daughter. (laughs) Up hanging out all night. No, okay. Let's go to First Chronicles ten thirteen and fourteen. We ain't gonna read that whole story. We got the, uh, the the grind of it. You know, this is about God being mad simply on witchcraft. Simply on looking to somebody else. First Chronicles 10, 13, and 14. We got people, you know, I mean, these people are serving horoscopes. And God is mad when you look at a horoscope trying to, you know, determine your day. Yeah. Why can't you get up and ask him? Talk yeah. to him. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, something that's simple. Yeah, it seems simple to us, but that's big to God because think about it. If your son or your daughter went to somebody else more than they went to you, wouldn't that make you upset? Yeah. We are his creation. You like, why you go over there? Right. You, they, you trust them, their information more than mine? Right. You know, that's what I'm saying. It seems petty. It seems simple. But something as simple as a horoscope, you can't step on a crack on the sidewalk because you're going to break your back. Believe in something like that. <laughs> Mess around and God may allow it to happen. But you're going to break your mama's back. Yeah. Right. Step on a crack and break your mama's back. Uh-huh. Step on a line. Mess around and your mama, mama, mama calls her <laughs> back and broke. What you going to do then? No. <laughs> step on a line and break the devil's spine. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's superstitious. <laughs> Yeah. Those are things that uh, in your mind you call bondage. Yeah. That's what it is. It's a mindset. So, Pastor, I was trying to question. Yesterday, yesterday um, I was sitting out yeah. and somebody was saying, you know, that they were born in a certain month. And I said, oh, so you got Leo. I don't I have a horoscope or anything like that. It's just something I remember from a time ago. And she's like, well, I, you know, that's neither here nor there or anything like that. Am I not supposed to just. Because sometimes I say before I think about That's I because that we're time. flesh. Well, the thing where you get sin is, is you, I mean, naturally we're going to acknowledge some things. We don't serve them. It's right. what we don't. Right. Now, 
you would have to go through. Now, I've studied the astrology, and I've studied all of those things to see, you know, where the power is. Because you can read the horoscope, and it can feel like, you know, it's got something to do with you. But you have to understand that the, the enemy, the flesh can't remember nothing. The enemy has to create, like, routines and things. So they got this group of people coming out of this birth. You have to be able to, that's a whole other method. You have to be able to study all of that to understand why everybody that's born at this time of the month, that it, this relates to them or that, or they have these traits or whatever. You'd have, you'd have to study that. But see, if you study that in an effort to serve it, if that's your God, then that's when it becomes sin. Yeah, we're going to look at, the, you see it on the calendar, you know, Leo, it begins here, and this, you know, Scorpio begins here. As long as you serve in the one and true God, yeah, we're going to think of some things that we grew up, you know, with, you know, because um, we're human. But as long as we're not serving it, and we can't pass judgment on somebody that is, we just, you know, all we can do is give them the truth. God does the convicting. Yeah. If it convicts them, they may, you know, come over on your side. But if it doesn't, everybody got to work up their own salvation. Yeah, I was, I'm October. I was born with, they say, Scorpio, you know, and we shouldn't even play with that. You know, the, you know the, what they say about Scorpios and stuff like that. We shouldn't even play with that. So I stopped playing with that because I understand, you know, that what we say, may, we may think that is fun and games, but the okay. spirit world, the subconscious don't know the difference. So if you speak something into the atmosphere, right. it doesn't know the difference. It's going to bring it to pass. So the principalities and rulers of the air and everything, they're going to do everything they can to bring that to pass. Now, if you say something positive, you know, they're going to try to come against it. So it's, it's just saying just we can't be judgmental about it. Right. And, you know, we not going to be disrespectful. I just tell them, you know, yeah, that's what, you know, that's what they say. You know, that's all I say. That's what they say. I say, but I believe in, I, I serve one God. That's all I say is I serve one God. Amen. Because all the little G's, that's where they come from. Horoscope, tarot cards, astrology. That's all the little G's. So, don't condemn ourselves when we, you know, somebody say something. Oh, you're a Leo? And, you know, before we know it, we may say, you know, we just, no, I serve, you know, after a while, if you get into a habit of it, you'll naturally think, your first thing is, no, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a disciple of Christ, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I don't even, so much, you sometimes you hear me say it, but I don't even claim Christianity, because Christ's life, I don't believe that's Christianity. That we throw up stuff like his gang signs now. You know, apostolic, Baptist, you know, denomination, God wasn't nothing about no denomination. Mm -hmm. We divided. He divided the languages because they was getting ready to kill himself on the Tower of Babel. Right. But he didn't divide the, the, the church. That's the apostles. They wanted to do their own thing. After Jesus went, you know, did what he did, the apostles took their own apostleship and they made it whatever they wanted to do. That's how we got the divisions. It's one body, one church, one Christ, one mind. Right. So, I just, just, I serve one true God. That's all I say. I said one true God. Now I know about these things. I'm very educated. And my thing is, is I'm educated and I know it. <laughs> so I have to be careful about how I bring things to people because they may not receive it the way I receive it. Or I may put it out there too much. Yeah, I have the same problem. So sometimes I think I, I created a hell for myself, you know, because you can't just sit and talk to everybody because everybody's not going to be on your level. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I feel like maybe I got to come down, you know, I don't like to say come down, but talk, you know, like an, into a toddler or something like that because I created the hell for myself with all of these degrees. But that's where God is training me to be a good leader because I don't care how high you get or how low you get, you ought to be able to talk to people. You ought to be able to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, that's just the way. This young lady here who's up playing, I thought she was sleeping, she up playing. <laughs> <laughs> she is beautiful because she really didn't have to learn sign language. It was just, she saw it a couple of times and it's just in her. 
-hmm. She can do all the alphabet and everything. Her praise dance, we think is, you know, just regular movement. Her praise dance is actually a sign language. The deaf people can understand in her praise dance. Mm -hmm. She's going to be able to preach to the deaf. Mm -hmm. And I love to see that sign language. Right. Oh, this is them. They texted me that I, I messed, made a mistake and said, as a uh, beauty dance Friday night, I'll, I'll fix it. <laughs> Let me tell her, I'll fix it. Uh, I will fix it. <laughs> I'm not home. Anyway. They just threw this on me at the last minute. It's all, it ain't going to be perfect. Uh, this is my apostle's church anniversary. So we trying to get it. I didn't know we was setting that up. You know me, I normally do things two or three months out. You know, because I don't like to be rushed. But anyway, let me go back to my scriptures. Um, this thing, every time it go off, it text message. I think it's, you know, the heart thing going. I'm like, I'm having a heart attack. No, but it's a text message. <laughs> Let's go to, did we read the scripture first, Chronicles 10? No. 10, oh, first one that calls 10, 13, and 14. So Saul died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for acts and counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquire not of the Lord. Therefore he, he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Mm -hmm. See how serious God is? Mm -hmm. yeah. All he did was talk to some, ask counsel of somebody else, a mm -hmm. familiar spirit, instead of going to God. See how serious God is? Right. Now, a lot of people say, oh, this is the Old Testament. God ain't like that no more. Mm -hmm. I beg the difference. Mm -hmm. All these people that have passed away ain't just passed away because of the coronavirus. They got it for a reason. Yeah. We don't know what they were doing. We don't know where their heart was at. All these tragedies that take place for unknown reason, we don't know why God allowed it to happen. But God yeah. knows, and he don't make no mistake. You know. So I would say God is still the same God he was in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, mm -hmm. and today. Same. So if we are sitting there going to somebody else, we're going to our friend. We go into, you know, we gossip and we go in to go find counsel with everybody else. We go to everybody but like the woman with the issue of blood. We went to everybody but God. So she went mm -hmm. to God at the end and finally got in. Matter of fact, that scripture said she went to him, went to them and couldn't spend all the money and mm -hmm. things got worse. Mm -hmm. When she got to God, to Jesus, pushed on his clothes, that's when everything was taken care of. Mm -hmm. So that's how we do when we go to everybody else, we end up broke. What if God be like he did Ananias and Sapphira? What if he did just like he did that and just wow. we just drop? God don't have to do no whole big or nothing. All he got to do is take our breath away and we're gone. That's, it. <laughs> that's how much power he has. All he got to do is take our breath away. That, and that's why I say the things that I was doing, and I'm not trying to condemn anybody. This is just me. This is my testimony. Because when I was running, I didn't want to be a pastor. I didn't, because you know what they were showing me back then, you know, how the pastors was acting, you know, with the Cadillacs and the offering plates. And I didn't see anybody getting healed. And I didn't see anybody, you know, benefiting from, I don't know who it is, but she waving. <laughs> I didn't see anybody benefiting from God, you know, or anything of that nature. I didn't want to be no pastor. So I ran around doing everything, but somebody came to me and told me that for every soul that dies that I was supposed to speak to, that's going to be on me. Mm -hmm. So, and I could keep running, keep running, keep running, till if God got tired of me like he did with them, them 6,000 and took my breath, you know, what was the point? I'm trying to get to my own thing, but God wants me to do his purpose. Y'all do know that's why we were created. For his purpose, his purpose. Not our purpose. I mean, we got things that we want to do. And as long as we go to him, I'm sure he'll, you know, if they in his will, then he'll let us do them too. But we was created for his plan, not our plan. Right. And in order to find out what his plan is, we got to be in his word. So if we're not picking up his word, but one day a week, how are we going to know? 
How are we going to know what the plan is? God know how to wake us up at 3 o'clock in the morning. He do me all the time. <laughs> Wait, I mean, eyes pop, clean open, you know, and sit there and talk to me or whatever. If I'm not in his will, if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, sometimes that talking ain't good. Sometimes that talking is chastising. You know, he chastises those he loves. If he's ever stopped chastising you, I'd be careful. Because that's when, you know, God's going to wash his hands. You know, as long as God is on you, there's hope. But if you ever get to a point you want to be walking around, you know, God is silent, you better, you know, you know, I, I, was, I would check my salvation because I make sure I'm still on the right path, you know. Because I've known a lot of preachers, I've known a lot of people that have said, talk about when God is silent, when God is absent, they don't hear God. The next thing you know, they're gone. Matter of fact, I think my last, my spiritual fa father, Dr. Fowler, I think his last message was, God is absent. When God is absent. I think that was his last message. And the next thing you know, we hear that he gone. And you know, it just hurt everybody. Right. That nobody was expecting that. But I believe his last message was entitled When God is Absent. Mm -hmm. So please catch up before she falls out the chair. <laughs> Use this so I fall out the chair. I don't want to eat. I can't see you I fall over. Okay. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 33 and 6. You need to run around the room or something. <laughs> this this, this uh, down here has been giving me cash. Oh, really? And can't sleep a certain way. I'll be just. Oh, uh, we got to get you some. What's it called? Some or something. 2 Chronicles 33 and 6. It says, he sacrificed his son in the fire in the valley of Zin for joists and beams for the buildings that the kings of Judah had allowed them to fall into ruin. That's, yes. Wait. 36 and... and 33 and 6. <laughs> <laughs> my pages, my pages stuck together. I, I went to... Three pages went. I read the first part of six, and when I turned the page, it went to third fourth. So. <laughs> okay, let me turn it over. He sacrificed his sons in the fire in the valley, and then Hanum practiced sorcery, divination, and witchcraft, and consulted mediums and spirits. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, provoking him to anger. This is another account of somebody that is using witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Enchanting, you know, sacrificing kids. Yeah. You know, you don't sacrifice your kids. Mm -hmm. God loves his children. Right. I mean, he loves us, but the ones that, you know, because they're innocent until a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, innocent children, we teach, the way we act, we teaching them, you know, wrong, just in our actions. You know, they look and observe us. So we got to walk up, upright before our kids, not just upright before the people in the church. Right. We got to walk upright before our kids. Mm -hmm. If I run around here and contain for us acting crazy, my kids looking at me, guess what do you think they're going to do? They're going to be the same way. Right. When the pandemic hit, if I was running around here scared, trying to hoard and all this kind of stuff, they wouldn't have the peace that they had. The first thing, because, you know, I... My, I have the respect of my children because mm -hmm. I, I try to walk upright before my children because I know that if I walk upright before them, I can maintain the respect of them. Right. I can't run around here doing any and everything, sleeping with any and everybody and have the respect of my boys. They're not going to have it. Right. Now, my boys, they ain't going to let nobody talk to me crazy, treat me any kind of way mm -hmm. or anything because they know that mama got their back. They know that I have the respect of my boys. I have the respect of my daughter. You know, I ain't just out here fanning my behind, showing any and everything, you know. You know, I catch every once in a while, you know, I say save her for praise, Dan, you know, stuff like that. But I have the respect of my daughter because she don't see a mama that's out here doing stuff like that right. in the world, the secular world. So, you know, they can, they, they heart trust in me because I, I try to live the life the best that I can. I ain't going to say I'm perfect, but 
I, I have a repentant heart. You know, I'm a woman after God's own heart. Like David. David broke every sin there was in the world. But he had a repentant heart. So that's why I have the respect of my children. That is, you really have something when you have the respect of your children. And that's not saying that, you know, you know, walking upright, they still going to act that way. You know, everybody got their own thing. But they will always remember how they how you made them feel. Always. They'll never forget that. Love remembers mm -hmm. love. Yes. So even when I was talking about that car accident I had, working up with that amnesia, didn't know my name, didn't know anything. But I knew love because my grandparents were sitting there. I knew mm -hmm. them. Out of all of everything that was going on, I knew them because love knows love. You don't forget right. love. God, that God is love. You know God. Mm -hmm. That's who created you. That's who mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. You you know God. You can't forget God because God is one. If He woke you up, you you know Him. Yes. Yeah. So let's go to um, Isaiah eight nineteen. We got two scriptures in Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah eight nineteen. After Isaiah, then we gonna work our way to. The New Testament. And one day shall and one day and one day shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that keep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God or the living to the dead. Okay, now y'all hear what that's saying. To their God. Mm -hmm. Anything that has a contrast against the one and true God, I'd be skeptical of. Familiar spirits. Familiar spirits is people that, you know, gossip is a familiar spirit. If you like sitting around, you know, listen to that. Um, um, smoking cigarettes is a familiar spirit. Drinking is a familiar spirit. The things you like to do in social settings, just being social, that's a familiar spirit. So, if what be careful what you feel comfortable around. Right. Be careful what you feel comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. If Jesus came back, if God parted the clouds, would you feel comfortable? Would you still feel comfortable doing it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying, we got to be mindful. We got to have an expectation that God is on His way back. We done got so lax and daisy, so you know, weary and well doing. You know, we done got comfortable. You know, we do what we want to do to where you know some of us don't have no conviction no more. Some of us have led over to a reprobate mind. You know, it don't bother us to you know drink and get drunk or smoke cigarettes or you know do anything anymore because we just inhabit. That's just what we do. Yes, but. We ought to be in expectation that if God come, mm -hmm. would we go to heaven? Is it worth eternity? And people keep saying, we keep saying that, saying that, saying that. But do you know, he may not have come in part of the clouds for us all at one time, but he rolled through here when that pandemic hit because mm -hmm. a whole lot of people went home. Mm -hmm. whether, they went, went, whether they went home to him or they went home to the other. Mm. And he's not that finished because wow. the pandemic. That's that's, saying, there's a new yeah, wave coming through. Oh yeah. And he said that in his word. A lot of the prophets, pastors, teachers, preachers was preaching. When he closed the doors, when he opened them, he said that if we go back in doing the same old thing, he was going. He was coming for the church. And true enough, we, every time you turn around, you see somebody you didn't even know they were sick. Mm -hmm. They just gone. Yeah. yeah, he so, took all the old people that were sinners and everything like he said he was going to and you know, it didn't so, bother all the younger people but now he's back for them. Now he's coming for the you. younger people again and everything. But what I'm saying is a lot of people in the church, the church, they like said the church ain't got no power. Well, the church ain't got no power because the church is doing things that, that ain't reverencing mm -hmm. God. Right. Like I said, my apostle, he told, he said, he, I think he was on one, matter of fact, Friday night video, he said God told him this time, after he brought him off the backside of the desert, he going to come and do it right this time. The spirit mm -hmm. of truth. So much stuff has been going on. People been getting healed, delivered, everything at this church. 
I mean, we people lay it out every time we have sir. Because the, the true spirit of God is in that building because the apostle is doing what, he's, what God told him to do. We are all on one accord up in there. I, we was talking today that we don't have to get a bigger church because it's filling up too fast. Too fast. Mm. So, I mean, we're going to be on Facebook and YouTube and everything still, but people are going to need to get to God to be able to be delivered. Right. So yeah. I already see that we're going to be busting out the seams of this building so far already. We already talked about it. I said, yeah, I said we're going to need our own building here real quick. Mm -hmm. He said the same thing. Right. So we looking for a new building. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to leave. I have to go prepare dinner for somebody. Go ahead. No problem. We'll be okay. on YouTube. He's in Truth's channel. Okay. Thank okay. you. But, uh, right okay, right. it's almost, we got 20 minutes anyway. Um, that's what I'm saying. We, God is doing a new thing, and we're going to be busting out the scenes in a minute. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people are depressed, people are hurting, people, you know, they've seen too much, they don't understand what to do. People are scared. We yeah. got a whole bunch of people afraid around here, you know, and people need, they need to be. They need to hear from God. They don't need to get up and hear these people that's preaching off their heart. You know, mm -hmm. spewing big venom all across the pulpits. They don't need that. They need to hear a true rainbow word from God. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Isaiah forty-seven, eight through fourteen. I'm saying we gotta stop going to all these other different things. These tarot cards. These psychics. These so, I mean, Vegas is big for that. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 47, 47, 8 through 14. We go into everything and everybody but God. But God. And mm -hmm. God is tired. He ain't playing. Mm -hmm. I keep saying that. God ain't playing no more. Mm -hmm. he, will let, he will let you, he will deliver you to your devices. Mm -hmm. 47. Isaiah 47, 8 through 14. Therefore, yeah. Hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwelleth carelessly, that saith in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the laws of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment. In one day, the laws of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection, for the multitude of thy sorceries, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none see thee, none see me. Mm -hmm. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it had perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, and thou shalt not know from whence from whence it came, in, in which it rises. And mischief shall fall upon thee, thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou may it prevail. Thou art weary, weary in the multitude of thy counselors. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a cold to warm it nor find to sit before it. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Amen. That word right there, that was prophetic for this time. Mm. That, 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 that word right there. Giving to the We just got to talking about giving the pleasures. Yes. Dwelling carelessly. We just doing any and everything that we want to do. You know, because we, a lot of people are giving up. They done seen the pandemic and they feel like if God couldn't stop the pandemic that God ain't got no power. Mm. And you know, be careful. I'm telling you. Be careful. So we just giving over to our pleasures. A lot of them is, you know, you know, well, I might as well have fun on my way. You know, that kind of be careful what you think. So all these people, he said, I'll give you over to them devices. 
You know, we doing tarot cards, we doing all kinds of laws. Like I said, Las Vegas is big for that. Mm. I mean, psychic and everybody, everybody trying to spend their last dollar trying to figure out what's going on, what's in the stars. But people better pay attention because God ain't playing. That's why I say, I say it all the time. I would not be surprised if Jesus showed up in my lifetime. That's what keeps me, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do. It keeps me from the works of the flesh. I'm not saying that I'm, you know, perfect or whatever. And then he's all talking about the ones who are perfect. The perfect one is in here that he's talking about is the ones, those self-righteous ones. Mm -hmm. Those ones that think they're holier than thou and got it together. But they harden so hardened that they can't help the people. They can't do nothing for the people. Yes. The scribes and the Pharisees that's in here, that's what we're talking about. Them ones, that they, 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 you know, they got their stuff, you know, everybody in the band for themselves. They ain't got the heart to share a half a hamburger. With them. Mm -hmm. Well, that ain't my problem. You know, it, if we in the body of Christ, it's all of our problems. Yes. So, I can put all my business out there, but a lot of stuff that God has been giving me, dropping in my spirit as far as concerning this ministry, we in village. It's time to get back to taking care of the village. These kids are falling by the wayside because we too busy in our own mess. We got to be looking at these kids. We got to be raising these kids up. Mm -hmm. We got to have mentors and teachers. All this knowledge and everything that God has given us, we got to be able to take the time and invest and give it back. Give back yeah. to our community. They're giving our, our people stimulus checks and what they call cash back or whatever advances or whatever they call it. They're giving us all this money because they know we ain't going to do them but keep spending it, spending it, spending it. And when there's, there's people that's trying to get welfare and tell them now they can't get it. Because they're like, you don't got the stimulus check, like, what you do with it? Yeah. Wow. They in the street. And then now, the babies. Yeah. The babies got 3000 something. Yeah. All this money the government then gave you, you sitting up there looking at it in the TV. Yeah. You know, because they give you, they give stuff to people that they know that they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to save. They don't know how to invest. They don't know how to, you know, the, you know, I won't say, I ain't gonna say just one nation. There's a lot of nations that know how to make money while they sleep. You know, they invest in the stocks and everything. We as a nation of people, we ain't had time to sit there and look for that. Half of us don't like to read. So, we got to be able to teach our youth, you know, how to invest, how to store up. Imagine if we could teach them now as when they're young. Imagine how much they would have stored up by the time they got to be our age. Mm. We would, that would be a revolution in our own community because we would teach them what they need to know how to survive. We could yeah. teach them that they don't have to suffer and struggle as we did mm. coming up. You know, we don't even have no hope in our own nation, our own community anymore. So all this education, that's what, if, you know, God calling me to be a pastor, that's what I want to do. It's all this education that he's given me. I want to give it back to the community. Amen. I want to, you know, teach them just like God can teach me. Like I said, most of this was free so far. But I want to be able to teach, you know, like I teach my kids entrepreneurship. I teach my kids all the stuff that I wish I'd have known in high school and stuff. Like she know business skills. She knows mm -hmm. she need to get off that phone and get in the Bible study. She all on Facebook or something. But <laughs> but uh, I teach my my children what I wish I knew when I was growing up. Right. Had I known the things, or if I had the mindset to know the things growing up, then I wouldn't have been running around out there trying to marry me a military man because I'd have been in there trying to do what I needed to do. I wouldn't have been 40 years old still trying to be an LCSW, trying to do. I'd have done been earlier. You know, if we, we need to pour back into our children. Yeah. Our seniors, they you know, they you know, they disrespectful to the seniors. But if they just sit down and talk with the seniors, a lot of y'all had jobs, a lot of y'all know stuff. Yeah. A lot of y'all, you know, y'all yeah. seen things. Y'all can teach yeah. how to sew, how to do certain things. You know, mm -hmm. they ain't got to go to college as many years as I've been if I sit there and, you know, talk to them with a class, right. you know, and teach them what, I, what I've what i learned. All they got to be willing to sit and listen or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of them that's out there that's scared, that they scared to go out their house, especially now with the pandemic and mm -hmm. everything that's going on. They seeing mm -hmm. so many businesses closed down. You know, everybody's just looking to get a job. 
What if we taught our, like I said, teach Brianna, what if we taught our children to own their own business? We got to come out of that Pharaoh mentality where Pharaoh, the welfare system, got to give us. Like I said, I ain't saying it's bad. I was on it. But God allowed me to use the welfare system to better myself, and that's how I became a school bus driver. That's how he taught me about retirement and investing in 401ks and everything like that. What if we give back to our community? Right. Instead of trying to talk about they got to go to college and learn this. We know it now. Why can't we give back to our community? And if we don't, we know somebody that do. So it's time to out to just start taking tithes and offering every month or every week or every, you know, in, in the church. And, you know, we got to be able to give them something back. And, and you know, we giving, we taking their tithes and offering. They can pay their own life bill. We got to be able to give them something back. To give them, you know, teach them a way that they can make money to invest. And as they invest and make more money, then that's how more comes into the church to help others. Mm -hmm. We got to stop and get this take, 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 take all the time. We got to be, I just believe that when Jesus went around out there with all the most of whom, he fed everybody. He fulfilled mm -hmm. their needs. I don't care what it was. If they, if whoever, if they didn't have a job, whatever, everybody ate. You know, he just talked. Everywhere he went, he talked. Yeah. Every synagogue, outside the synagogue, alongside the shore, in the boat, he talked. Yeah, yes, he did. We see it. We, we sitting up in the congregation, but the only time we teaching is on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We preaching a message, and then we go home. So I'm saying, I believe that it's time to go back. It's time to give back to the community. It's time to help them, you know, more so. He said, teach a man to fish. We can't just keep paying light bills all the time. Right. We got to teach them how to do what they need to do so they can pay their own light bill. True. Let's go to, that. we moving over to the uh, New Testament now. We got one, actually I only got three more scriptures. I guess we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. Acts 19 and 19. Let's go see what Acts got to say. That's the book of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Pentecost. Acts 19. Acts 19 and 19. Pentecost. That's after Jesus came and, and left. He left us a comforter. Yes. He left us somebody to help us do or get through. He said we're going to do more than he did. Yes. And that's how we should be. We should be 19 and 19. Act 19 and 19. We should be like Jesus did. We should be able to leave these young people something. Right. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Many of them brought was curious. That's what I'm saying. That was witchcraft. The books, how many? Well, the Bible wasn't written yet, so we know one of them in the Bible. But the books, they, I mean, that's, that's witchcraft. Instead of taking the knowledge and using it, they burning it. What good is it burned? You don't, I mean, sacrificing, you know, that's an altar. You know, sacrificing it like that. Counting the price. You know, they get money out of it. You could have got more value out of it had you let the books be, in, you know, read. Right. Give to somebody, pass them on generation, generation, generation. Okay, let's go to the last two scriptures we're going to find. Is in Revelation. That's my book. I still, God said y'all still. God yes. said you still ain't trying to teach that yet. Yeah. Let's write that teach Revelation. Revelation. Teach yeah. Revelation now while we're going through what we're going through. That's gonna make people yeah. lose their mind. So He said ain't trying to teach it yet. Right. We get there. I'm scared of Revelation. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Revelation is talking about a new beginning. Yeah. That's what it is. It's about a new That's beginning. What's, what's the new right. But some people have read Revelation and lost their mind. They have went mental. Because, yeah. you know, you can't play. Some people read the Bible backwards and have lost their mind. You cannot play with the word. This is a living book. Yes, it it's is. on the phone, but it's the word is living. Yes, it is. So, yeah, Revelation ain't nothing to play with. Revelation what? Uh, 21 to 8. 
But we always say, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's the second death. What's the first death? The first death is when you gave your life to Christ. That's the first mm -hmm. death. Okay. He's talking about liars. Y'all saw that word in there, right? Liars. Yes. Something as simple as that. Because we think all the rest of it is so big. You know, <laughs> murder. We can't murder. Unbelieving. Y'all seen that word in there too? Yeah. Unbelieving? Yeah. Something as simple as not believing. You can be in the lake of fire for that. It's not simple to God. Because you cannot please God without faith. Right. You got to believe on him. You got to believe he is who he is. Just because you can't see it don't mean he ain't real. Right. You can't see electricity, but you use it. Yep. So I'm saying, you got liars. Lying, I don't care. Blue lie, blue lie, white lie, yellow lie, green lie. I don't care what color it is. Yeah, it's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. So we got to be careful what we do. That little thing, that any little thing, is it worth eternity? It's a, all of it. It's going to be the second death. Your first death, if you have accepted Christ into your life, that's the first death. Now, if you ain't accepted, that second death is going to be the all in all death. Because if you ain't accepted, you ain't yet, you going to go there anyway. That's just how it is. But after you, set, after you receive him, then you have the second death. Because after you receive him, you still doing these things? You still unbelieving? You still mm. lying and whoremongering and all that kind of stuff? Mm. That's why I don't believe one saved, always saved. Because if I get saved and I'm still doing what I want to do, there's a lake of fire. Yep. Ain't no one saved, always saved. Just because I'm in the kingdom, you know, just because I received them in my life, don't mean that I'm, you know, sub I'm not subject to anything else. True. Because the second death, that's a lake of fire. Because if I'm still out there doing what I want to do and not doing what God say do, being rebellious, stubborn, that's that's the second death. I can still go to hell. I can still, well, hell is a mindset. I can still go to the lake of fire. Right. There's a scripture that says, as it is, well, this prayer, say, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven. Heaven is a mindset. God never mm -hmm. promised us heaven. I hate to mess up somebody's theology, but he never promised us heaven. That's what, his, what he says. God promised us a new earth, a new Jerusalem. That's what he promised us. We need to stop telling that lie, talking about, you know, we're going to dance around heaven all day. God ain't never told us we're going to heaven. All these songs and everything. Right, heaven all day, yeah. God ain't never gave that to us. We need to read the scriptures for what they say, what it says. He said he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. That's what he said. That's what he promised us. Stop believing promises that aren't true. That's unbelieving. That's why he says, study to show the Bible, to show your own self approved. Yes. Rise and divide in the word of truth. You believe in you're going to dance around heaven all day, you ain't believing the word of God. Yes. You believe in what the enemy is putting in you. Them feel good messages. Them feel good songs. Every yes. song you hear on the radio ain't anointed. Mm. Make sure that they tell them the truth. Yeah. Make sure. You to listen to the words. Yeah, listen to what they're saying. Because a lot of them just saying some stuff that you don't know what they're saying and before you know it, you believe in something that wasn't even true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like the nursing rhymes. rock a -bye baby in the <laughs> Why would you sing your baby uh, that? Why does that mean? That ain't nobody but the enemy. Yeah. These cartoons and Disney, the subliminal messages, you know, Pinocchio molesting the, the boy. And, I mean, come on now, yeah. watch, watch. We sit there let these kids play these games and PlayStation. And the consoles get big with old computers now. That's because the enemy is ministering to our kids through these video games. Yes. Because they know we ain't going to sit there and take the time to look at them and do nothing. So yes. we got yes. to be mindful. Right. Oh, my grandson. Uh, I'm saying, I don't, I can't, I don't. And I'm allow. telling them, you guys need to take that from him. Right. Mm -hmm. You destroyed his mind. Yeah, you destroyed his mind. Kill it. Because so you don't know what he's thinking about, what he's dreaming about at night. Yeah. How do you think serial killers are raised? Mm -hmm. How do you think serial killers are made? 
I ain't saying just on video games, but demonic thoughts, demonic presence, you know, seeing stuff that's negative, seeing mm -hmm. domestic violence, parents fighting all the time, seeing all kind of chaos. That messes with the, the 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 what you call the neurotransmitters or what in yeah. the mind, the brain. Yeah. It messes with the way the brain functions. Then and then all these Fritos and chips and these kids is malnutrition and everything. They ain't getting enough fluid to their brain. That's yeah. another reason. You know, we gotta be feed our kids healthy food, you know, so that they can get the nutrition that they need, be able to retain information. Some of them can't comprehend because they can't retain information because their brain ain't got enough fluid. Mm. They ain't got the vitamins and stuff that they need. We got to be more mindful of our children. Our children just run around out here like zombies mm. because we're not mindful of what's going on with them. The devil is having his way with our kids because, you know, they just hanging in the balance because we too busy thinking about what's going on with us. Yeah. We should be mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, oh, oh I, I can't do this, I can't play this, I can't go do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to stop being I, 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 I and pay attention to our kids. Mm -hmm. Last scripture, Revelation 22 and 15. For without adults and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whoever and whosoever love it and make it a lie. Mm -hmm. Without, that's what I'm saying. That's another cut and dry. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and they would say we got that out the book of Revelation. So, we got to be careful of what we do. <clears throat> Jesus, God, Yeshua, whoever you want to call him, just call him. Mm -hmm. He made part the class. Are you ready? Are you committing any kind of witchcraft are you doing if he show up is you ready to go uh, or mm. are you go, or are we going to be left behind that's one thing another thing I like my apostle say ain't nobody going to be left behind not in in the, in the church not in far as you know mentorship helping these kids learn these, <laughs> these, this algebra we're going to get tutors all of this right. anybody that's struggling any need that come in that house it's going to be attended to. Mm -hmm. I don't care. How, if I can't do it, somebody else is going to be there to do it. We're going to find somebody that know how to do it. Right. And like I said, algebra ain't one of them. I'm going to have to find somebody. Because I don't do algebra. <laughs> that algebra, that core stuff, I'm like, ooh, y'all going to find somebody to do that. But I'm just saying, we're going to make sure there's not no need going to be met. We got people, we are on one accord to where we got people that have a heart for the people that come in there. We ain't in there for the money. We got a heart for the people. People come, we got case management going. We got, you know, giving out food, there's buy, uh, backpacks and stuff. We got all kind of resources because we believe in, you know, serving the people. Yeah. We believe in the people yeah. having what they need. We believe in being in the hands of Christ. Yeah. Not sitting up there just collecting money, but being able to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. We got, um, you know, you, we'll be able to talk to people, pray with people, free counseling or whatever. And mm -hmm. if you need mental health, we, we got people set up that we know that are reputable and ain't just in it for the money that we will send you to to get you a therapist or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, because I don't have my license yet. But and, until I get my license, I have no problem sending you to the help that you yeah. need yeah. or whatever. So we need to come together as a community. We need to act like the body of Christ. That's yeah, what we need true. to do. Yes. All this witchcraft, all this work of the flesh, that ain't nothing but the devil acting out in our mm -hmm. flesh. Mm -hmm. We need to have the love of Christ, the fruit of the spirit. That's what we need to do. All right, mm -hmm. now pray us out. Somebody, come on, Brianna. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it to you. You up today, girl? <laughs> That's a blessing. Pray us out. Lord, thank you for Bible study that we have gotten yes. today. We hope that everybody gets home safely. Um, we hope that we learned something from this Bible study that we can use in our daily lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Amen.